For those who may not know, a footprint or a landing pattern is the real-world component with copper or through-hole pads that get mounted onto the board. So we're going to cover nearly everything that's needed to create a footprint from scratch and add it to our USB component that'll be stored in our Altium 365 workspace. If you had closed the component editor from before, just double-click on the component from the Projects panel. Under the footprint icon, click on the drop-down arrow beside the wizard button and select New. The first thing you'll notice is that the footprint editor is very similar to the PCB environment, and this is perfect as the shortcuts and menus are nearly identical between the two. So when you're creating a footprint, you'll need to look at the datasheet to get the recommended layout for the component. As you can see in this drawing, we have the dimensions for the surface mount pads, the two slotted holes, along with the overall dimensions of the component. First things first, we need to change our units to metric as our component dimensions are shown in millimeters. You can toggle between units by hitting the Q key anywhere in the editor or at the bottom of the properties panel. According to the drawing, the pins are 1.35 millimeters tall by 0.4 millimeters wide, and the pad numbering is arranged from left to right. Either from the place menu or the active bar, we'll place a pad. It'll be attached to your cursor, so let's hit the tab key to change some of its properties. We'll first change the designator to 1. As we mentioned before when we were creating the schematic symbol, these designators need to match to make proper electrical connectivity. Next, we'll make sure that the pad is going to be placed on the top layer since these pads will be surface mount. We'll scroll down and change the shape to rectangular, and we'll change the dimensions to 0.4 by 1.35. Now hit the pause icon and we'll place the pad anywhere just above the origin as we'll be changing the location and spacing of the pad shortly. After placing the first pad, another pad with the same properties will be on your cursor ready to place. You'll notice it's already been auto-incremented to 2, so we'll go ahead and place 9 more pads to the right of each other so that we have a total of 10 pads. There's no need to worry about the spacing for now. There's also two through-hole slots that we need to create as well. We'll place a pad again and hit the tab key to change its properties. Ensure the designator is set to 11. We'll change the layer to multi-layer. We'll make the shape round. The X dimension will be 1.5 millimeters and the Y dimension will be 2.3 millimeters. The whole shape will be a slot. The whole size will be 1.3 millimeters. And the whole length or width will be 0.5 millimeters. Now that everything is filled out, we can hit the pause icon and place pads 11 and 12 to the left and right below our other pads. We now need to adjust the location and spacing of each pad so that it matches the recommended layout from the datasheet. Let's select pad 11. Just above the pad stack section, you'll notice the XY location coordinates and rotation value. Now this footprint will require quite a bit of calculations to properly space out some of its pads. Instead of using a calculator, you can enter a formula directly into the coordinate field. For example, our X coordinate for pad 11 is going to be negative 6.95, but we can make our calculations directly in the field with the proper spacing. We've already done the calculations on what the spacing should be, which is why we already have these values. Once you hit enter, you'll end up with the same value of negative 6.95. The Y coordinate will be 0 and the pad will automatically move to the proper location. For pad 12, the X coordinate will be 5.6 and the Y coordinate will be 0. Your slotted pad should now be in line with the origin. Let's now finish the placement for the top layer pads. Select all of the surface mount pads and change the Y coordinate to 2.675. This will align them all along the same Y coordinate. Now left click anywhere to clear the selection. The next step is to set the spacing of each pad. If we take a look at the drawing again, it shows a distance of 6.7 between the centers of pin 3 and pin 8. So if we divide 6.7 by 2, then each pad will be placed at 3.35. So select pad 3 and change the X coordinate to negative 3.35, which will be to the left of the origin. Then for pad 8, do the same but set it to positive 3.35 so that it's to the right of the origin and the spacing of those pads are now correct. We decided to calculate the spacing for the remaining pads, so go ahead and change the X coordinate for every pad shown here. Your footprint should now look similar to ours, and don't worry, the pads on the right-hand side are meant to be closer to the slotted hole. 
So now the copper portion of the component is done, but we still need to draw the graphical portion such as an outline, component center, and more. Let's open the View Configuration panel from the Panels button. Right click on any layer and you'll be able to add a component layer pair. From the layer type drop down, we'll select Assembly and click OK. You'll see a new top and bottom assembly layer that we can now use. Just below this, we'll set the active layer to the top assembly layer to start drawing the dimensions of our component. From the active bar, let's place a line. Draw a straight line just below and across the slotted pads and right click twice when you're done placing it. The line may not be the perfect length, so we'll select it and make changes to the length and the width. Enter the same values as we're showing here and you'll notice the line will update as we're making changes. Now we'll place a vertical line on the left hand side, then select it to change its values. You can draw the remaining two lines to complete the rectangle or simply copy, paste and rotate the two lines that we've just placed. When you need to place objects at specific coordinates, you can always use the heads up display to show you where you are. It can be toggled on or off using the Shift H shortcut keys. The next step is to add an indicator of the first pin. This is commonly represented as a small circle placed inside or near the component contour. From the place menu, we'll draw a full circle near the first pin of the component and you'll need to left click twice to complete it. The assembly layer will usually be used for drawings or additional information, but the silkscreen layer is the one that actually gets printed onto the board which is known as the overlay layer. From the layer bar, let's make the top overlay the active layer. We'll go into single layer mode by using the Shift S shortcut keys. This will dim the other layers so that we can focus on this layer only. Before drawing any lines, it'll be easier if we hit the G key and change the grid to 0.025 millimeters. Now place a line and we'll hit the tab key to ensure the line width is 0.15 millimeters. Go ahead and place the lines on top of the contour that we just placed on the assembly layer. The only difference here is that you won't be drawing over the slotted pad since it would be cut off during the silkscreen printing process. We recommend that you use the shift spacebar shortcut keys to change the drawing angle to 90 degrees so that it's easier to draw along the existing contour. We'll also draw another first pad marker outside the component contour by placing another full circle. The next step is to create a courtyard layer. This is used as an outline with additional clearance based on the board density level of IPC standard 7531. These levels are A, B, and C. So for example, if you wanted your board to adhere to a level B density, your component outline will need to exceed the actual dimensions by 0.25 millimeters. From the view configuration panel, we'll right click on any layer to add another component layer pair. This time we'll select courtyard as the layer type. We'll also make sure the top courtyard is the active layer from the drop down just below. We'll use the place line command again to draw a rectangle around the same contour as the other two layers. Now we need to add the additional clearance of 0.25 millimeters. Let's select the top horizontal line and change the Y coordinate for the start and end value to 3.9 millimeters. We'll do the same with the bottom line and change these values to negative 2.7 millimeters. You can double check the gap by using the measure tool using the Control M shortcut keys. Hitting Shift C will clear any measurements that you've made. Now for the vertical lines, the measurement needs to be taken from the edge of the pad since this is the widest point of the component. Using the measurement tool once again, click from the edge of the pad and use the heads up display to show you the delta of the distance. We can see here that we'll need to move our line to negative 8.05 millimeters. Select the line on the left and change the X value for the start and ending to negative 8.05. We'll do the same for the vertical line on the right hand side which gives us positive 6.7. Now simply close off the rectangle by placing some more lines. Next we're going to add lines for the component center and we'll finish off the footprint by adding a detailed 3D body. From the view configuration panel once again we'll add another component layer pair and we'll define the layer type as component center. Ensure the top component center layer is the active layer from the drop down below. Now place some lines where it intersects at the origin of the component. It may be easier to change the grid. 
Now the last step is to add a 3D model to the footprint. This will offer accurate component height information and it's visually more pleasing to see in the PCB. But first we'll need to create a layer pair that's dedicated for 3D bodies. From the view configuration panel we'll add another component layer pair and select 3D body as the layer type. Don't forget to make the top 3D body the active layer. From the place menu select 3D body. The 3D body that we're using can be downloaded using the link in the description of this video and feel free to store it somewhere that's easy to access. Just browse for this model, click open and place it anywhere in the workspace. With the 3D body still selected, we'll set the XY coordinates as negative 3.35 and negative 1.9. Ensure the rotation is 90 degrees and we'll define the standoff height as 1.2 millimeters. Now hit the 3 key to switch to 3D mode and ensure the placement of the body is accurate. If everything looks good, let's save the footprint and we can close this tab. Now back in the component editor, we'll see the new footprint that we just created along with the 3D body. So now we're officially done with this component. From the file menu, let's select save to server. It's always recommended to add a comment in the release notes such as first component release. Once the release is successful, the component tab will close and now it's ready to be used by anyone who's connected to this workspace.